Thanks everyone for coming. I know I've got great competition tonight. We've got Miley Cyrus down at Rector Arena. <laughs> <laughs> so, seismic risk mitigation. This has been a popular dining topic between my friends these days. I mean, a lot of us might be interested in seismic risk mitigation. This is different. I mean, structural engineering, normally people don't want to know what I do for a living. But here, seismic risk mitigation, here we go. Some say this is a $10 billion problem for New Zealand. Too expensive, we can't afford it. But some say this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to reduce the seismic risk in our built infrastructure. It really highlighted two peculiarities with seismic risk mitigation projects. First of all is we can't predict earthquakes. It may happen today, somewhere in, in the world. It may happen 50 years from now. We might know something about probability of when it may happen. Is it one in 100 years, one in 1,000 years fault? but ultimately we can't predict when it happens. So the uncertainty of earthquakes. You, you can take my medical analogy and apply it to the chart, really. If you imagine, at the beginning of the process, we, we do, us engineers, structural engineers, do some sort of screening procedure, what we call the initial evaluation procedure. It's a bit like you going to a doctor and they, as I said, do a screening. They may ask you a few questions, go through some checkbox, okay, he's not coughing, he's not having a fever, so it's good. On, on the basis of some visual inspection and some high-level screening uh, tool, we have to make a judgment whether the building is sick, the building is healthy, or somewhere in between. What I hope to demonstrate to you today is that someone coming from a university institution in New Zealand, we can be involved in significant research which spans all the way from fundamentals through to broad implications for all buildings and particular inf implications for specific buildings of high importance in New Zealand. One of the most pronounced things, of course, with the Canterbury earthquakes was the severe amount of liquefaction associated with uh, sufficial soils in the region. And we actually knew that we were going to have significant liquefaction if we got strong shaking in the Canterbury earthquakes because a combination of extremely shallow water near the ground surface and extremely soft soils. It's not just about designing new buildings or retrofitting existing buildings, but as you know, one of the key things associated with the Canterbury earthquakes was insurance claims. So for geotechnical engineers, the assessment of how strong the ground shook and how much damage my residential house uh, suffered is a key requirement for insurance companies to decide how much of a payout is this particular dwelling going to receive. Over 40,000 buildings which have been assessed as TC3 land, land which has poor foundation conditions, they now have specific information about what occurred at their particular building during each of the earthquakes in the Canterbury earthquake sequence. It's my pleasure to share with you a project that's formed a large part of my working life and also helped shape my career to where it is today. I graduated from the University of Auckland some nine years ago now, worked on site for the first year and a half before making the move into the consultancy office, worked for a company called Buller George for the first four and a half years before moving to Becker. I've been there for nearly four years now worked on some fantastic projects and worked with some of Becker's largest clients. The final piece of this puzzle is the Science Centre, which is under construction at the moment on the corner of Wellesley and Simon Street, opposite the Engineering School and the School of Architecture. My role was that of the lead structural engineer. I was responsible for the interdisciplinary coordination of the structure with the services and the architecture. 3D coordination of this building was conducted in Revit. The building services engineers, us structural engineers and the architects all worked on a common platform using Revit. Becker was actually in fact um, employed as the services and the structural engineers. What that meant is that we could actually work in the model in real time. They built one just on a platform and what they did, they used a steel column, uh, sorry, a timber column, which was, which was dubbed the Trojan column, built this up, formed the reinforcing around it and what they found was this was very beneficial. Once they got onto site and actually dropped these in and started to construct them on site, they found that there were very few issues with these. This has been a truly incredible project to be part of. I'm into my fifth year of working with the university and I enjoy working with this team. And hopefully next time you pass a construction site, you'll ponder what smart structural gems are hidden inside this building. Thank you for your time.